Hey, this is Pastor Ryan. Thanks for joining us for step one. Our passage this week is Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 26. Step one is a resource to help aid in your inductive Bible study. It's a journey through the observation step. First, we're going to take a broad look at the passage. Paul says Christ has set us free, and our lives are now incompatible with those who are trying to achieve righteousness through the law. And those who oppose his teaching concerning freedom are destined for judgment. Our freedom in Christ to love one another fulfills the law. He finishes the chapter by contrasting those who live life in the flesh versus those who live a true life in the spirit. Let's look at some key observations in the passage. Paul says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Because of this reality, we are called to stand firm in this belief, in the positive, not submitting again to the yoke of slavery, in the negative. Paul pauses to personally address the Galatian churches, saying if they accept circumcision or this aspect of the law, then it invalidates Christ's advantage, pointing to a universal principle with those who accept the framework of circumcision to keep the whole law. You cannot trust in the righteousness of Christ while at the same time trying to achieve your own righteousness. Paul contrasts this search with those waiting for their righteousness through faith. He reasons again that in Christ, this law framework counts for nothing. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. Paul turns to address his opponents, asking, who hindered you from obeying the truth? saying this teaching is not from God. Even a little of this kind of teaching will infect the entire group. He addresses for a second time the one who is teaching this, saying he will receive judgment for teaching this idea, referencing him for a third time. Paul says if he was teaching circumcision, he'd have a much easier time of ministry, but he continues teaching righteousness through Christ anyway, ending with a fourth reference to these false teachers wishing they would emasculate themselves. Paul returns to his original idea, saying they were called to freedom, but corrects the idea that you can use this freedom to please the flesh. We can only use this freedom to love, serving one another. For the law is summarized with the command to love one another. He contrasts this with those who bite and devour one another, saying this kind of life only leads to people consuming one another. He gives an imperative for us to walk by the Spirit. If you do this, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, explaining the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. These are essentially opposed in their natures, keeping you from doing what you want to do. He says that if you are led by the Spirit, using a second verb paralleling the idea of walking by the Spirit, then you are not under the law. He gives 15 examples of what the life in the flesh looks like, saying those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. He contrasts this kind of life in the flesh with the fruit of the Spirit, giving nine examples of character traits produced by the Spirit, mentioning love a fourth time. He takes time to mention none of these character traits are ever restricted by any law, repeating a final time that those who are in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh along with its passions and desires, concluding that those who live by the Spirit will also keep in step with the Spirit, contrasting one more time with a life filled with conceit, provocation, and envy, saying these are not characteristics we can express toward one another, a term he uses twice here. Christians are free to fulfill the law through a life lived in the Spirit. And that's step one for Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 26. We'd encourage you to continue your step one journey on your own. What observations do you see in the text? What's an important observation you think we missed in today's video? You're encouraged to use the Life Group Notes to continue your Bible study journey this week. We're looking forward to processing our Bible study journeys together this Sunday at Louisville Evangelical Free Church. We hope to see you then.